Hello everyone and welcome back to another Engineering Statics lecture video. I hope you guys are all doing well and are ready to learn, so let's get started. So in the previous lecture we discussed center of gravity and mass, and we determined indirectly if the gravity and mass are constant, which basically means our material is homogeneous, the location of the center and mass and gravity is actually independent of gravity and mass. Now it's one of those things that we kind of stumbled upon it, but I didn't really talk about it too much because if we were to look at that last example we did in the last lecture where we found the center of gravity of this triangle here and we analyzed this vertical slice and we did the formula, we found that since our specific weight was constant, we factored it out and since we have it on the top and bottom, it just completely canceled out. So we were able to find this x component right here simply by looking at the geometry of the triangle. We did not actually need to know the specific weight, or if you were doing center of mass, we don't need to know the density or anything like that. We can find these coordinate points for a homogeneous material based on just the geometry alone. And if we were to do this and find these points based on just geometry alone, this is actually called the geometric centroid, but we just call it centroid. And this is something that we've actually done so many times before. If you guys remember distributed loads on beams, we said, okay, we have a distributed load, but we converted it to an equivalent point load acting at a distance d. And one of the things that we said is, okay, if our load is rectangular, we know that d is just going to be kind of that halfway point of the rectangle. Notice I didn't talk about the density of the load, anything like that. All we needed to know was our distributed load was a rectangle. If we know the geometry, we can actually find the location of this centroid. So the D in this case that we had so many times before, this was actually the X component of the centroid. Isn't that great? I love topics that actually relate to stuff we've done because it makes it easier to visualize. Okay, that's exactly what we did. I'm familiar with this. It's not so new to me. So if we were to say, okay, if this is the case, what are my formulas? Well, we have basically three different formulas based on what you're after. We have the centroid of a volume, of an area, and of a line. So the most common one, as you'll see, is the centroid of an area. So again, if gravity is constant, we can factor out the specific weight of our center of gravity equation, and this basically gives us our centroid expressions. Again, for the center of gravity, x bar, or that x location, was given by the following formula. But again, if the specific weight is constant, we can just factor that bad boy out, and as we can see, we have gamma over gamma. If gamma is just a constant, we know that that's going to cancel, and we're left with the following expression. If we were to repeat this for y bar as well as z bar, we get the following expressions for our centroid in terms of volume. So notice that when we're integrating these, we're doing it with respect to volume. Now we can actually simplify this even further. But before we do that, I just want to make a note. And this is one of those notes that I, I say here for clarity, but I'm going to show you guys on the next slide. That x squiggle, y squiggle, and z squiggle, that's the distance to the centroid of our differential slice. As you guys remember from the last videos, in order to solve these integrals, we needed to take a little slice, either horizontally or vertically, of our shape and then analyze that slice. So these x squiggle, y squiggle, and z squiggles, well, that's just going to be the centroid of our slice. So it's actually not too bad at all, because remember, when we deal with differential slices, the rectangles, and we already know what the centroid of a rectangle is, so we're good to go. Now, back to what I was saying about finding the centroid of an area, all we have to do is look at the formula above, and we were to say, okay, if I were to have a shape, let's say a rectangle, and the thickness of my rectangle into the page was constant, we can actually factor out that thickness and go from volume is equal to basically that thickness b times the area. And if I were to do this in this formula, which again I'm differentiating with respect to volume, and I were to do that modification and b is constant, I can actually factor b out the same way I did with the specific weight. It cancels and I'm left with the following equation. So it's almost identical to the one above. The only difference is now, instead of differentiating with respect to volume, I'm differentiating with respect to area. And I can repeat this with y bar and z bar, and I get the following formulas. Now, if you guys are going to memorize a formula from this lecture at all, it's going to be this one. The most common type of exam questions you will see 
is finding the centroid of an area, all right, of an area. It's very, very rare, I have found personally, that they ask you for the centroid of a volume or a line. So this is going to be the one you want. So you're saying, okay, Clayton, this is the common one. I'm a little confused on how to use it. I don't blame you. When I saw this, when I was in Eng 130 or statics or whatever university you're from, I ran for the hills. When I see an integral sign, it's no thank you, I'm a head out. And that was the case there. But if you realize the tricks, it's actually not too bad. So let's do an example so you guys can see exactly what I mean. The first thing is this. When we analyze these, we always have to take a differential slice. Now, I said it can either be horizontally or vertically. All right, so there's the first trick. When you're taking a differential slice to find DA, it can be horizontal or vertical. It doesn't matter. Now, one thing that you will see is there is a preferable one, and we'll go into that right here. So let's say that we want to find the centroid of this shaded area. So again, we're finding the centroid of an area. Now, the shape is described by the function y is equal to x squared, and it goes from 0 to 1, both in the x direction as well as the y direction. So again, we know we're looking for the centroid here, x bar. We can also find y bar, but for this particular example, we're just going to find x bar. Now again, we need to find a differential slice. It can be vertical or horizontal, but as you'll see, if we are dealing with x bar, all right, that horizontal centroid, we want to take a vertical slice. It's going to become very apparent why we want to do this. So that's kind of the little trick. If I'm looking for a horizontal length, I want a vertical slice. If I'm looking for a vertical length, I want a horizontal slice. So it's going to be kind of the opposite. Let's see why this is. So again, I'm going to take a vertical slice. So it's just a little slice like this. And again, all I'm going to do is try and find the dimensions of this slice so that I can find that differential area, dA. We know that for a rectangle, the area is just going to be base times height. So that's all I need to know in this particular example. If I took a vertical slice, we know that the thickness or the width of our rectangle has to be very, very small in order for the differential to work. So we know that this is just going to be dx. If I were to take a horizontal slice, the height there is just going to be dy. So that's kind of the nice thing is that first dimension is always kind of given. The second thing, which starts to lose some students, is what is going to be the height of this rectangle. Remember that in our picture here, I put the rectangle at an arbitrary location, but this rectangle could be anywhere along this shape. So if I want a general formula for the height, well, we know that the height is actually just going to be equal to y, and we know that y is equal to x squared. So if I'm looking for the area, and I now know the base and the height, I can find the area is just the base times the height. So we know that the height is x squared and the base is dx. So it's looking pretty good. And if I were to look at my formula, it's the integral of x squiggle dA divided by the integral of dA. And now we have an expression for dA. So most of it's already solved. All I have to do is substitute dA down into dx, or I guess <laughs> the formula, and I'm good to go. The last thing that we need to know is what is going to be this x squiggle. Now on the previous slide, I mentioned it in some words, but it wasn't really clear. That's why I said, look at the next slide, because again, this x squiggle is going to be the distance from the axis all the way to the centroid of our shape. We know that for a rectangle, it's right at the center. And if we were to look at this, we can say, okay, our x squiggle is going to look something like this. And we know that for this particular case, it's just gonna be equal to x. So we can substitute that into the formula, we have x times x squared dx integrated from 0 to 1 on the top. We have x squared integrated from 0 to 1 on the bottom. It's a simple integral. You guys can do it by hand. And you'll find that x bar is equal to 3 over 4. So if we look at this and take a step back, you're saying, OK, we had integrals, which suck. No one likes integrals. But this actually wasn't too bad, Clayton. I'm, I'm pretty happy. But as we will see, it depends entirely on the slice. So that was a vertical slice, which again, I said was recommended. But in the note above, I said, it doesn't matter which slice you take. So in this particular case, let's say we chose a horizontal slice. Again, perfectly valid, but it's gonna turn into a real dumpster fire real quick, as you're going to see. So we say, okay, we chose a horizontal slice. So it's going to look something like this. And we're doing the same process as before. I now know that I have a rectangle and I need to find the area of this rectangle. 
The first one's always given, so in that thickness direction, we know it's going to be dy. And on the bottom, if we were to look here, we know that the width is going to be 1 minus x. I'm going to pull up my cursor on the screen so you guys can see where this comes from. We know that this distance from the axis all the way over to this point right here is going to be x. And we know that this complete distance from here all the way to the end is 1. So if I'm looking for this little distance in between, it's going to be 1, which is, again, the complete distance, minus x, which is the distance from here to the kind of the beginning of our rectangle. So hopefully that makes sense. But this is why it becomes a dumpster fire. Okay, here's the trick. If we were to look at the vertical slice above, we said that the thickness was dx. And if we look in our integral equation, we then integrated with respect to dx. If we look at our horizontal slice, we have dy now, which means that we have to integrate everything with respect to dy. And if we were to look at our width, it's 1 minus x. Well, I can't integrate x with respect to y. So what you have to do if you pick the unrecommended slice, if you will, is you have to convert everything in terms of dy. So in this case, I say I have 1 minus x. I need that in terms of y. And it's actually not that hard to do. And the reason why is because we were given the function y equals x squared. So I can kind of rearrange it algebraically to say, OK, well, if that's the case, x has to be equal to the square root of y. So I can substitute that into my width equation. And then from there, I can find the area as 1 minus the square root of y times dy, which is great because now everything's in terms of y and I'm integrating with respect to y. So far, so good to go. Uh, so far, so good. I, I don't know. I'm mixing up words now. So we look at our formula and say, OK, well, if we go to x bar, it's not a problem because now we have dA in terms of y. But what is going to be x squiggle? Remember, x squiggle, again, is the distance from the axis over to the centroid of our shape. So if we were to look at the picture, it's going to look something like this. Remember that the centroid of a rectangle is halfway in between. So it's going to be, I'm bringing my mouse on the screen again, it's going to be somewhere right here. So we know that the centroid in this case is going to be x plus 1 half of 1 minus x. Where does this come from? Well, from this axis all the way over to the start of the rectangle, that's going to be x. And then the distance from here, the start of the rectangle, to the midway point is 1 half of 1 minus x. Remember, 1 minus x, that's the width over here. So if I want half of the width, it's just going to be 1 half times the width. But remember, Again, this is the trick to picking the wrong slice, <laughs> is that we're integrating with respect to y. We're not integrating with respect to x. So if we look at this formula, we have to make it in terms of y, but that's okay because we know that x is equal to the square root of y. So we know that x squiggle can be rearranged in terms of y. But this is why it becomes messy because if we look at our formula down below, which now we know everything, but we were to substitute everything in, this is your integral now. <laughs> I would love to see students try to integrate this on an exam. It's not going to end up very well. So typically what you'll do, you'll just throw us in your calculator. You'll have a great time doing it. But you'll find out that the integration, after you do it, it's going to be the same. It's going to be 3 over 4, which is exactly what we got above. So my little hint to you guys, if we're looking for x bar, you take a vertical slice. If you're looking for y bar, so the centroid from the bottom up, then you want to take a horizontal slice. And it's pretty simple. If I'm looking for x bar, where is it? x bar, I want dx, right? x bar, I want dx. If I'm looking for y bar, I want a dy. That's kind of the, the big hint to these questions. That's going to be centroid of an area, which again, most common on exams. The last thing I'm going to cover in terms of integration for centroids is the centroid of a line. So again, it's the least common application, but if you want to do it, it's the same formula manipulation that we did before, where we're now just saying that the thickness of our line is constant, so we can factor more out and cancel. And if we were to do an example, let's say we want the centroid of this line now, so not the shaded area as before, but just the line itself, all we need to do is follow the same procedure where we find a differential so we can make dl in terms of dx or dy. So if I were to take a little slice of my line, a differential slice, and we know that the, the length of it is dl, we can actually find its two components. At the bottom here, we know it's going to be dx, and the vertical one is going to be 
dy. So this is great because I now have a right triangle. I know the hypotenuse as well as the two components. We know that there's a nice relationship from Pythagoras that basically says that dl is going to be equal to the square root of dx squared plus dy squared. So we're on the right track, but always remember we have to integrate with respect to one. Right here we have a problem because we have dx and dy. So what I need to do is I need to find a way to get dy in terms of dx. But it's not that hard because if we know that y is equal to x squared, then I can differentiate y with respect to x to get 2x. And if I were to take that dx term on the bottom and just move it over to the other side, I know that dy is equal to 2x dx. I substitute that bad boy into the equation, and then I get my dl formula in terms of dx. Now I can simplify this a little bit by first squaring everything. And then if I were to look in, I say, okay, I have dx squared on both of the terms. So I can factor it out to get the following. Now this is great because I have an expression for dl in terms of dx. So if I were to look at x bar in this case and look at my formula, say, okay, the only thing missing is going to be x squiggle. But again, that's just the distance from the axis to the centroid, which is just going to be x. I get the following. So I can again just throw this into my calculator. I get 0.574. So yeah, that's it for this video. I want to thank you guys so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next video.